I would like to see Jim Carrey maybe in the future not sure if it will happen as he is in his 60s. History book the sequel return make it better a little known but depressing fact. When it's not bankrolling ambitious Oscar winning epics such as Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings series, New Line Cinema has a curious sideline. In lieu of being able to hire Jim Carrey to hoop sequels to his early films for the studio, New Line goes ahead anyway. The thing is, see, Jim Carrey, despite a few high-profile fizzles, the Majestic, etc., has been a remarkably consistent draw for a decade now, and a very hard actor to find a substitute for. No one loves with more energy. And so it was remarkable when, a couple of summers ago, New Line had the not-so-great idea that two actors imitating Carrey and Jeff Daniels could pull off a prequel to Dumb and Dumber, and Dumber and Dumber, when Harry Met Lloyd was born. Having not learned anything, arguably the trait that separates us from lower primates, oh, wait, monkeys learn, New Line has gone ahead and made Son of the Mask, a sequel to one of Carrie's earliest blowackbusters. Advertisement I admire their ingenuity. By using the phrase Son of, the studio has stumbled on a clever qualifier, fathers and sons may be joined by DNA, but within those three letters, there's ample room for idiosyncrasies. Which is to say, run, fast, now. Son of the Mask has not a thing to do with the original Mask, 1994, except a faint family resemblance, and still I wouldn't answer the door if it comes looking to borrow money. The timid bank clerk by day that Jim Carrey played in the first Mask is never even mentioned. A dog is sniffing around a rigorous edge and brings home a mysterious wooden mask, the same mask that transformed Carrie into a zed suited stud with a green goblin face and the ability to bug his eyes out like Bugs Bunny. It came to the right place. The dog is owned by Tim Avery, Jamie Kennedy, a timid day wage sketch artist for an animation studio. His very name is homage to Tex Avery, the legendary Warner, and later MGM, animator responsible for the personality of Bugs Bunny in the go for broke lunacy that defined Looney Tunes at their creative peak in the 40s. And the son of the mask, as miserably as it fails, has its heart in the right place and is desperate to be just as much a tribute to Avery's style. Avery's legacy, on the other hand, should come labeled like one of those acme crates of dynamite that while E. Coyote always stumbled on, toy run and it'll blow up in your face. And yet the off the rails insanity of a Looney Tunes classic is so alluring it appears to be effortless. You can hear director Lawrence Guterman convincing himself, chaos is chaos, right? For eight minutes, it can be. Son of the Mask, though, wants to wig this into a plot about fatherhood and growing up in some other stuff. Tim wears the mask, and becomes the mask, gets respect at work, and gets busy with his wife, who gives birth, nine months later, to a bouncing baby mask. Then the dog gets into the mask and his tricks. Alan Cumming plays Loki, god of mischief, who comes to Earth on orders of his dad, Odin, Bob, Hoskins, unrecognizable beneath makeup, and tries to get the mask back. Yes, son of the mask resorts to dog tricks. There's more than a whiff of desperation here. When Kennedy is in green face, his character looks alarmingly like Gary Busey, Gary Busey Odin on pea soup. And out of green face, his body is stiff and his face dazed and his voice distant. The effect is a lot like in those new Star Wars movies where the actors are performing alongside so many special effects that'll be inserted later, they look paranoid about where they should stand. And as with those films, Son of the Mask has a few inventive effects that grow ugly and numbing with repetition. We now know what Looney Tunes would look like in a three-dimensional world, but we still miss the zingers. And I didn't even get to the creepy dancing infant, the Mask Baby. Which is an actual child in close-up, but when he's pirouetting, there's a resemblance to the zombie kid from Pet Cemetery.